How many times do you get people just coming up to you asking you a ton of questions like I'm asking you? You must get it a lot. Like, yes, people I just do. weren't there. They, they, they can't picture it and just like yourself, you catch your breath and say, damn, he was doing this way before I even was born. Yeah. How did that feel for its time? Like, were there, were there a huge level of risk aspect there? Was it... No, honestly, there were risks, don't get me wrong, but that, not as much as it was past mid-70s. It was almost like a... There was a little bit more free form to it. Yes. There wasn't such... It, was, it was, wasn't so um, monitored. It was monitored, but not to the point that they wanted to hurt you. Mm. That came a little bit it, later, right? You're right. Killer, killer, podcast, killer, killer, official dot com. You need the television app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Talk about world music and street cultures. Killer Keller Podcast. Fired up just shit. Yeah, everything is good. Looking good. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Live and direct central London or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be. God damn it, you don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout out to the originals. Big shout out to everybody that's sharing and caring. You know, we don't do this for our health. This is strictly for the street culture. Everyone's got the Television app. You know what time it is. Free download, free street culture sports. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, Strange Station, and all of our uh, appreciatives inside the house. We are in VIP Graffiti Tottenham. Come on, hold tight, Billy. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> yeah, we got pulse inside go. the place. We got pulse inside. I'll see. Uh, and we have a very special guest inside. Thank Somebody who's been here for a couple of weeks now and finally managed to cross paths. The man, one of the first people to put a Bode character on a train from the mid 70s. Oh my goodness. MTA's finest. The mighty Re R double E for your sins. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thank you. Uh, How's it feel? I mean, one of the originals. I mean, I know you live with this every day, but uh, you, you, to be in the UK, you know, in 2022, how's it feeling right now? The sun's shining. You've done a whole plethora of different Hall of Fames recently. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, honestly. Uh, thanks to Paul. So I had a wonderful time out here. Mm -hmm. And um, I brought my Oh, hold tight, Justin, along. as well. Justin inside the place. Yes. What's goody, yes, what's goody? He's there a little nervous, and I don't want him to be nervous. I just want him to have a good time mm. and enjoy the atmosphere that's uh, mm. out here. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's a, I guess when you're an international traveler, I mean, obviously post uh, COVID, everywhere's your home. I mean, you, you must, you know, Orbit the planet with everybody just being like, yo, yeah, we used to paint here, we used to do that. But Thank you, yes. We <laughs> did a lot of painting here and there. And um, back then it was uh, nothing but paint. Mm -hmm. And today it's better paint. Yeah, like a four-wheel drive. And yes. Do you really feel that? You feel like there's, there has really been like an, a, a level of... Degree up from, from, you know, from back then to now? The level now is... It's hitting the roof. Mm -hmm. The colors that you have. Looking at this VIP store here is like mm -hmm. looking at a candy store. It's like looking at a candy this store. This man got multi-colors. Billy, you're the man. <laughs> he <did. laughs> He's doing his best to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> it's a hard thing. <laughs> Big up Billy H every time. For real, for real. You got colors here that you can't even imagine. From back in the day, there was just not... No, around, right? I have very little selection of colors to use. Oh, yeah. yeah, tell us about the colors. What well, you Red Devil, it was basically your greens, your orange, nothing to blend with. Everything was flat. Mm -hmm. But the color was... I mean, Red Devil was outstanding. Really? That was the go-to? That was the go-to colors to go for. And what about like the black and the white that you used black to Black and to? white wasn't really that important. It no. was basically for outlines and mm. stuff like that. But What um, were the brands in black and white that you used to... Black and white, I used to get a lot of Red Devils. Mm -hmm. For mahoganies, dark colors were mahoganies, black, dark green, and dark blue. And then came the Rustoleum colors, which mm -hmm. came a little bit later, mm -hmm. which you had the uh, sandalwoods, you had the beiges, you had 
What else? The wow. federal safety purples, Ew. the federal safety greens, the cascade green, the marlin blue. Are you getting all of this, people? Are you getting this? This is the realest conversation about the, just those to, were colors oh, to use. Just to put it in context, mid seventies, you started painting. Your original name. Early 70s, yeah, early yeah, yeah. 70s, early so it wasn't 70s. even mid, it was early 70s. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I started wow. painting the trains by 73, 74. That's crazy. And I started writing by 72. First generation. Thank you. In competition with the likes of Blade? Yeah, me and Blade Maybe. had our run in, and he knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big up Blade, hold tight Blade. Give us some more names that were ballooning around at that well, time. Well, you mentioned Blade, it's not far off the tree comes Comet, mm -hmm. then comes Death, then comes Rose, then mm -hmm. comes Vamp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy fives there. Crazy. Yes. Before... Before Re, though, you were writing Opal and Rex. These were early, early adopted names that you had had, right? Yes, yes, yes. When I first started writing, I started writing my original name, my birth name, which was Fred. Mm -hmm. I had Fred 174. Mm. Then after wow. that, I became Rex. Wow. Yes. So how old were you when you first started painting? I started painting at the age of 12, 13. We didn't last long, honestly. Our, our, our lifespan in graph back then was very limited because by the age of 16, the Vandal Squad was already... In effect, they in were. In effect, completely, and they wanted you. They tried to grab you as quickly as possible because if you turn the age of 17, they mm. could throw more charges at you, so... Oh, right. our, our lifespan was limited. Yeah, some bet. of us went further, some of us fell off. I fell off. Did did you? you fell yeah, off? by seventy seven, I I walked away from it, and I just like totally lost contact with the art world, with the graph world, you could say. Mm. And um, by two thousand and two, that's when I realized <laughs> that it was still moving on. Well, let's go back to let's go back to the early early. The 15, 16, sure. 13 year old, year old you. Because from what I, un and this is only through speaking to other people on the podcast, big up to all the originals and everybody that's been on so far. Um, I like to get into the sepia side of things where, you know, back in the day, getting your hands dirty in New York for what it was. I mean, there was a lot of gangs and I know there was a level of association, um, the Reaper and Savage Skulls right. and, and all, all that kind of connectivity that happened within the boroughs. And, and you, you were very much in, in the mix I of all of that. Talk that. to me about that. Talk to me about the gang culture of that the time. The gang culture back then was basically representing uh, certain sections of the Bronx. I represented from um, 174th Street to the Bronx Zoo from Southern Boulevard all the way past Boston Road. Right. And um, we maintained our, our section. We kept it as clean as possible. Mm. We just didn't let nobody disrespect really? it. How crazy did it get? Because, I mean, to think about New York then... And I said this on the part one podcast. It was there, there, these two worlds. It's like there's downtown and uptown, <laughs> and 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 of course Manhattan was always the bright lights, more seedier, uh, promiscuous side of of New York, and then you know where the disco and dance glitter happened, and then there was obviously the the opposite end. Uh, right, but in the early seventies, uh, Manhattan had basically all their subway cars on top, and then by mid seventies, everything came underground. Right. So it kept everything low key, and whenever you appeared in my hand, you were mm. well tamed and, mm. and more or less because gang wise in, in my hand, they were there, but they were respectful mm. and they, they let you walk through. Mm. Uh, Daily Ave. I lived in Daly Avenue, yes. Talk to me about the local guys. Talk to me about the local people. Well, the here. local people, the uh, writers especially. Well, there was plenty of writers. Uh, where I lived at, meaning Delhi Avenue and Tremont was basically where I grew up and we had tons of writers, nothing major, but mm. just like everybody else, there is others that want to proceed. What names were, were were around for the time? Well, honestly, there was Beaver Split, Fish One, Joy, Rip Off, uh, Riff Raff, uh, I am Mike, um, <laughs> Acid, Split, 
It was a whole crazy bunch of guys. My friends were Rico, Jax One, POW. We all hail out. We all had plenty of time to grow up together and have a Dude, great time. How do you remember time. those names? How, how because were they, they were my friends. So they're just ingrained of your childhood. It's just yes, mm. yes, they were friends of mine. Mm. Was it? Yes. Bus, ah, bus bombers. Yes. It's really dangerous out there, man. New, New York for that time was crazy. It, it was crazy on its own, but if you knew your neighborhood, you had no problems as long as you're still within your boundaries. Mm -hmm. And me growing up, I had a bus barns in front of me and a bus barns down the block. Really? So, yes. So this is how it was an intuitive to just kind of get involved in right, the Right, right. How easy was it to be um, enveloped into the, the the train and the bus culture? Oh, it, it, well, it, it was two different cultures, meaning the ones that stood in the bus were on their way up, which that's what I was going to do. Mm. I was hitting the buses. I enjoyed my buses, but I wanted to move on. Mm. And by moving on, all I had to do was look up at the trains and see what they were doing. Mm. And eventually, I found my way up there. Mm. I mean, it's just so... It feels so far removed, the whole idea of... <laughs> Of New York being the way it was, and 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 graffiti being so new, it was such a new thing to people, and you were one of the first generations to. Thank you. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's almost a given now. It's like Eddie Van Halen being able to play the electric guitar, <laughs> or anyone being able to play electric guitar on a record. It's such a given now, but it was so new and raw and fresh. How does it? How did that feel for its time? Like, were there were there a huge level of risk aspect there? Was it? No, honestly, there were risks, don't get me wrong, but that, not as much as it was past mid-70s. At the uh, earliest, I, if I could remember correctly, was basically getting your marker and walking over to the bus barns and tagging it up. Mm. You still had your risks of the police coming by, and you still had the, the cleaners coming in and mm. checking up on you, mm. but... Those were the little chances you took. But generally, it was almost like a. There was a little bit more free form to it. Yes. There wasn't such. A, it was. It was wasn't so um, monitored. It was monitored, but not to the point that they wanted to hurt you. Mm. That came a little bit it, later, right? You're right. It was <laughs> the point of, hey, get away from there. We don't need you here. Get out. Get out. Really? Basically, that was it. Okay. How did you make that transition from the buses to the trains? How did that? That transitional period took a point that in my life I felt that I needed to move up. Mm. Um, being on the buses for such a period of time, I had to progress. And the way I progressed was... Seeing I and Mike, mm -hmm. my good friend, mm -hmm. he was tagging up all over the place. I was in junior high school. He was in high school at that point, And he was going to Evander Childs, which is a uh, train right away. Right. So for me to get my experience on the train, I had to follow suit. Train you up. Yeah, well, he, he didn't train me up. He just gave me the, the... The coordinates. Right. Not the full coordinates on it. It was just basically, this is what we're doing. If you want to continue, follow suit. Mm. Who showed you Who showed you techniques? Who, who, was, who, was your, who was your... Who was your spa that would be showing you techniques of the time? Well, basically, you just follow suit. Right. There were guys that I hung out with that gave me pointers. Mm. Give me, give me a few names. Cliff that you 159, right. Kindle, mm. uh, Chino Malo. Those are guys that had more experience on black books. Mm. Cliff had more experience on the train. Kindle had more experience on the train. Mm. Wav, Schick, they all had slightly more steps mm. ahead of me and following suit was not a problem yeah and i think it's all about keeping the receptors open and you know being ready to learn when when an opportunity is there where you just suddenly pick something up i mean i'm not even, just even today watching you guys paint i was poking my head around i was like yo this is you can always learn something can't you two ogs two ogs inside <laughs> the place innit, it Billy? two ogs um 
And yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> else um, MTA. Yes. MTA, let's get, so uh, for those that don't know, MTA stands for? Well, MTA had two meanings. And for the guys in California and for the kids out in Queens, it stood Master Tigers Association. That was the first generation. That was the first generation mm. of MTA. Mm. Then after that, when Chino fell off the, he stopped. Mm. Well, he said he did. I changed it to Mad Transit Artists. Mm. And from there we continued. There was this shift, wasn't there? Because um, Tina and Cade, they moved on to TMT. Right. This, when did this happen? Well, this happened in uh, 76, 77, when uh, Cade and Teen, hi guys. Big up. Big they up. were a little younger than us, mm. or maybe not that advanced, but well-skilled. Mm. And when MTA started dissolving or breaking down a little, I was the only one carrying the MTA tag besides Vine and Taibu. Mm. And then came Kate and Team, which they wanted to continue progress. Yeah. And they decided to come out with their own crew, not to be disrespectful to the MTA letters. Mm. They came out with TMT. And um, TMT, at that point, they came out and said, TMT stands for the Magnificent Two. Mm, yeah, that's complicated. It means it can't expand. It, it, it complicated things because we didn't want to keep it into a point of uh, like the crazy five, mm. you know, five guys and there's eight guys riding. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We decided to change the two into a team. Mm. And that's when TMT came into play. What's the relationship? What was the relationship like between the, the, the two crews at that time? Oh, there um, was no relationship at all. We really? were brothers all the way yeah, thick so. and thin. Mm -hmm. I have no hard feelings and they have no hard feelings. We came as one, like mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. um, with graffiti propelling itself forward into popularity. Right. At its peak, how many how many trains do you reckon you were doing? How how frequent? Because now it, let's just get into the nuts and bolts here. How, nuts and bolts here. How honestly, often were you painting? The writers played the trains every day. Yeah. So yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So how many? But what the world's seen is such a small percentage through the internet and phones. That's true. That actually got done. If you're not listening to this, because obviously there's only, there's only so Pulse is making a really good point, is that the amount of things that you see online do not do any justice yes, to the amount of work that is really put in. Correct. How many how many pieces do you reckon you've done over your years? In Train trains first. Trains first for that for that period. The the period. I tell you what, we did a top to bottom bus. Me, gel, and put. We did top to bottom bus. It ran. After that, me, Shik, and Was, we did side panels on buses. <laughs> After that. We were bombing the system. Train-wise, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, we was at the trust, trussels of the train yards painting. Give me one of those stories that is very rarely spoke of that you've never talked about that happened to you in an experience. Well, give, me, give, me a, give, me a, give me a classic, classic regraph story. Classic yeah. regraph story. In the yards or the bus, give me... Yeah, no, give me. In, in the bus barns, mm. it was <laughs> me and the TMT crew and the MTA crew, which was one. Mm. We was in the bus barns, and we were tagging up the insides, and um, me and me and Waz, may he rest in peace, were the last ones in the bus, meaning everybody's already in there. We're the last ones coming in. And God and behold, the cleanup guy walks into the bus and says, gotcha. <laughs> oh, shit. I saw Mr. Ruff jumped out the window, <laughs> best 149, squeezed him through the door. And me 
And wives just looked at each other and says, okay, what's next? <laughs> and we fought our way out. Bear in mind, what's the martial arts? Yes. Was, wow. Yeah, Wash is a... Uh, no, he wasn't playing. He, he knew his stuff. Yeah, seasoned. Peter was very close friend of mine. We ran through the whole system together. Mad. And what? he partnered off with Shik. Really? A very good friend of mine. And um, Shik right now is uh, part of the Mean Machine uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. first rap. Uh, into the Hall of Fame. Into, Hall of Fame? Yes. <gasps> first generation rapper, Spanish Jeez. rapper. Jeez. Yeah. He was part of that, that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know exactly where Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was Shik. Whoa. I love it when writers are also either rappers or part of some other fraternity, you know, DJs. Or... I yeah. love that shit so much. I love it. It's part of... It, it, that says to me that, you know, their creative arm extends further. Extends further <laughs> than just the it one. It does, thing. it does. Yeah. People this is, writing on the train and writing on the street before any hip-hop existed. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. Hip-hop was... Hip hop came a little bit later. Yes, and I think that's where the kind of buck stops with you, Reed, because there ain't many people that can hold the flag and say, "Well, actually, I I was kind of there when before hip hop ha had its hand in it." It's very hard to come by, and for somebody to still be painting internationally the way you are. Thank you. Because this is the other that. thing, isn't it? How many times do you get people just coming up to you asking you a ton of questions like I'm asking you? You must get it a lot. Like yes, people I just do. weren't there. They, they they can't picture it and just like yourself, you catch your breath and say, damn, he was doing this way before I even was born. Yeah. Um Espionage, if I said espionage, one eighty. Yes. Um this was part of your growing up, this was part of the the the, the journey. If well, you... Espinage was my hometown, and knowing right, yeah. knowing it, other, a, yeah, that was a spot. knowing other writers, I would basically go according to where we were going. Mm. Like for instance, they would come out and tell me, "Yo, let's go to Utica." I'm there. Mm -hmm. Yo, let's go to New Lights. I'm there. And then as like. As I got a little older, I said to myself, why should I travel all the way out to Brooklyn? <laughs> it's right. It's when true. When my house is right there. Bang, right there. Yes. So it was like your training ground. That was my house. That's so sick. Yeah. I fell in love with that place. Yeah. I was there from 12 o'clock in the afternoon until whatever time I felt like leaving. Seriously, and yes. you could you just up just no no bother. If that there was good, the daytime thing. Daytime, right. right? Every twenty minutes, the trains coming by. They're jumping on the tracks onto the onto the third rail with the boards. Stand doing a piece. You had a click click, and the train from the station come in. We got twenty minutes, so you know to climb back on to the platform. See, but Espionage had a, a god a, damn it. Espionage had a sweet spot, meaning. Uptown, downtown, two layups in the middle. And you could stand in the middle, and those trains would not affect you. Really? All you had to do was just pay attention to see who was coming in. How, how were the, what, was the, what, was the, uh, what were the senses like for these trains coming in? Because sometimes they can be real creepy. You don't actually hit, you've got to be super alert for that sort of thing, right? It's not the point of being alert. It's the point of paying attention to what's coming at you. Right. At that point, there wasn't, um, there, well, there was, but what I'm saying is, the third rail didn't play into effect. Yeah. Um, the only one that paid, played into effect was the cops coming in. Right. Because being between those two trains, the third rail was already out, out of the equation on both plays. Right. So. Yeah. It was in a big gap. Okay, so in between, so the, the gap was there, but there no third, third rail. No third rail. No, I think two cars parked up. Two cars. Yeah. And it's in the middle of between two cars. Right. Try ah, to okay. picture that. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Third yeah. Rail's on the, on the yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Man. 
Um, that's why I called it home. I went in there anytime that I wanted to. Bring the beers in. Sounds right. pretty straightforward oh, to no, me. Oh, no, no. We're not talking. <laughs> <you. laughs> so let's get into some different layups. Of course, we've talked espionage 180th, but what, 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 what other layups are we talking here? Well, I experienced so many different layups. Uh, I had fun on the four layups, mm. which was elevated layups. It was uh, basically uh, painting with the four lines, you guys which was uh, myself, uh, Rat, Peabody, uh, Chew. Everybody calls him mid-77. Oh, time mid-77. It oh. was Chew at that time. And um, painting on Fordham Road, which was at least two stories up, open air, one, one layup running down from station to station. No. Middle track. Middle track. I'm not really about that hype, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not really about that hype. <laughs> you don't be scared of heights, no? I'm not scared. No, I'm not scared no of heights. Fair. I enjoy the heights. Really? Yeah. yeah. That thing does, that does not sound appealing nah, at all. It was, it was fun. It was uh, being up there and getting down from there was two different experiences. What's the experience? Okay, so give me those experience for those who, uh, for those that aren't into parkour. Explain the uh, the scenario of getting up versus getting down. Okay, getting there was the point of getting off on the Fordham side, on the uptown side, mm. and walking on the catwalk to where you wanted to paint. Mm -hmm. We basically walked between two stations and painted there. Wow. And by painting there, we had access to whatever it was needed to paint. We made sure we had enough paint bringing there, and we kept our paint inside the car or mm. in between cars so it won't fall off. Inside the car? Yes. We had keys to get in. Stop it. How? how? <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. So yeah, how? Well, to get the keys, either we stole the keys right. from the motorman or the conductor. And what did you have to do to get that off of them? Was this a, was this a stick-up sort of scenario? No, it wasn't a stick-up. It was basically whenever the, the conductor stuck his hands out the car... And he's looking out the window with the keys in his hands, yeah. smash him. Or if not, smash it off his hands and run out. Get him cut, bang, 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 everyone's right. happy. Right, basically that was it. He will not chase you. Basically, you're out before anything else takes place. And again, it's just crazy to think that you could just put the paint in the car and let it move along, and that's where you quote-unquote store it. Right. That's... But it's, right. Yeah, lift the seat up and put it in. Is that what? Well, That's mad. Sandboxes in, in train stations. We we yeah. In sandboxes. Yeah. In sandboxes as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that yeah. doesn't seem too far fetched. But the whole idea of the thing that you're going to be painting, I'm just going to put the paint in it. That's yeah. <laughs> for anybody that has any, you know, want to secure their, if, their if transport I'm, if system. If I'm painting a top to bottom, and I'm painting away, and I still have plenty of full cans. I would take my paint and go inside that car, open up the seats, put my paint in there, and I know my paint is traveling back and forth whenever I need it. Is there? Was that a regular thing? Would did you would you would you pull up some seats yes, and there'd be other people's paint yes, there? Yes, yes. Really? Me and you, me and Cliff, we all had that same mentality. Really? As travel without no paint, but always have but always paint. have paint. Yes. That's unthought of now. I mean, it's, it's just, it seems such a, a far-fetched idea. No, it's not a... If, if your wheels are turning and you want to paint, that's the way you have to do it. Mm. Because traveling inside the car and avoiding to be arrested, you walked with as little as possible. You said to me um, earlier that... 
the summer was harder for you to rack compared yes, to the winter. It was, it was. Explain, so how seasonally, how did, you know, when was your most prolific time and, and where was the best, you know, racking is a huge sport in itself. That's just a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Uh, you know, I was racking over a best 149 <laughs> at this um, <laughs> auto place. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> I'm racking, I got my paint, and then best turns around and tells me, anybody looking? And I said, no, go ahead. And he started shoving shit down his pants. <laughs> at that point, the guy at the cashier just looked, yo, what the fuck <laughs> you doing? <laughs> he got caught in the process. I fought my way out the door. I threw my cans to the side. They asked me, what the hell you took? I said, I ain't take anything. <laughs> That's my boy. Mm-hmm. We stood there side by side with each other and... Best 149 at that point was embarrassed that he got caught, but enjoying the thrill while he got through. See, that's the other thing as well. The thrill of it. The adrenaline all round when it comes to the painting culture is is intense. You got to understand, back then, there wasn't no harsh crimes, meaning... Get out of here. That's mm. all you're going to get. Really? A slap on the wrist and get out. Attempting to rob paint. Yeah, yeah, Price yeah. of paint was like 75 cents a can. And compared to what else is going on out in the street at the time, right. it's mediocre. Right. So let's get into it. So so was, was winter better for racking for you? Winter was one time that you say to yourself, I'm going to load up on paint mm. and rack that shit out of all the stores. Really? So you go in there and you just fill up, fill up, fill up, come out, drop it, go back in there, fill up, fill up, drop, and go back at least three times before they notice you. What? what? You got a bear in mind, Winter Big Coat. Yeah. Yeah. Winter Big Coat. Yeah. There it is. If it was summertime, it's harder. It's like a denim jacket on with a pin on his cuffs. Yeah, that's why I feel for like West Coast. I feel for them a little bit because they they were always wearing <laughs> shorts and <laughs> t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Shit, what are you doing? Where are you going in LA dressed in a raincoat? <laughs> 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 Tough crowd, man. <laughs> but I guess that's why summertime well, was always better. Was West Coast wasn't painting. around at that time. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I listen, Meaning, you know. Honestly, when we went to Rack, we went to Rack. Mm, mm. We made sure we had enough paint to keep going. Mm. That was in the wintertime. In the summertime, it was going in there with a duffel bag and just load mm. up the duffel bag and walk your way out. But a lot harder, I would imagine. A lot harder, yes, a lot harder. Did you used to store your paint from the winter to make it across the summer? Yes. Wow, wow. How much did you preserve your paint? Uh, actually, can I just get into another question? Because you just say that the colours were reasonably limited for the, for the time it was. Did, did you used to mix your paints a lot? What do you mean by mix my paint? Well, because there's some techniques, you know, like using the ink pen. And no, no, Th- no, those no, techniques no, weren't no, around? No, no, no one even no. thought about it. No, really? No, I've never no, heard of any. No. Wow. So that was something maybe for later on. Yeah. Paint changed around 77, 78. Well, Sterling Crylon came with new colours. So mm. I've got a whole new generation. You've gone the generation. Yes. So 77, 78 was when that right, transfer when that of colour. Right, over. Okay. Yeah. Did you feel the pressure when those new group of writers came? Because that sounded like sounds like a bit of a no. By that time, uh, I was gone. You were gone. But um, you were aware of the, the additions of colours and things started brightening up pretty quickly. Did it not make you want to jump back into it? That you, knowing that there was new colours out there. Okay. What made me stop completely? That's a good point. What made you stop? I had a son at the age right born in 1977. Right. So at that time, I just said to myself, there is no need for me to go out there and paint no more. Mm. I mean, I would love to. I enjoy my painting time. But pampers and everything else that came into play. Yeah. And I guess with the emergence of new colors and new people and new obstacles, shit got dangerous. 
dangerous for me? No, no because but for, I but enjoy for, what for I was doing. Scene. For the graffiti scene, as in. Okay, you got to understand and, and, and to the point that um, when I retired, meaning I walked away from it, I just like took a blind eye to whatever else was being done. Didn't pay... Didn't no, no. I, I, oh no, there was a point that TMT used to come up to me and tell me, yo, look at this car that we did. Mm. And I would say, damn, I wish I was there. Really? Yeah. Does that ever leave you, that feeling of wanting to be in a yard or smell the yard or hear the, the, the electrics? Does that... It never leaves you. It is to the point is that you got to know your limits. Mm. You got you got to understand your responsibilities. So, whenever they told me was yo listen, uh, this and this is gonna take place, and mm. we're gonna be doing a whole car, and this is what the outlines that we're gonna be mm. doing. You just like hold your breath and say, mm, I mm. wish I was there. And I guess you're torn because obviously family duties. The you know this is this is real love this is something that i guess for your first kid especially you want just wanted to honor and be the best you could be it must have been really yeah it must have been a, a real tearing of two worlds in it your mind it was a tearing of two worlds because my family did not understand my passion mm. they knew my passion and they they despised of it did they hate it oh man what a passion really yes what did they that would, did they recognize the skill and the creativity? No, they didn't recognize the skill. They didn't appreciate the skill. All they did was just look at it like, you're fucking vandalists. Wow. Man, how things changed. But, and and you, you just had to respond to, you know, I had to respect family. that. Yes, yeah. I had to respect that. Um, yeah, that's, that's a hard bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. This is the other thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Did we 1977 do? was a gorgeous year. Mm. I mean, I had fun. I enjoyed myself throughout that whole time and all painting and hanging out with the guys. But after that, it was... Talk to me about the battles, man. The competition was ridiculously high back then. <laughs> and you know that there were some battles going on. There talk was a to, lot of battles. Dude, talk, to, talk to us about the battles. There was a lot of battles going on, <laughs> meaning uh, <laughs> the crazy five myself. There you go. <laughs> the, the fat five mm -hmm. going out and, and just, yo, let's smash this. Let's do this. Fab five, bro, care. they were legendary. Legendary. Yes. The, the, okay, Doc. Mono, mm -hmm. Slug, High Slug, Old Tight, Slave, Old Tight, Doc, mm -hmm. Always, Mono. We all had our times and glory mm -hmm. enjoying ourselves. Could you feel the competition? Did, was the heat on the street? Were you? Did you feel like? Yeah, like when the battle was on. Yeah. Really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, mind you, I was covered in event. You know, I can only imagine. It's like you see these trains rolling past and she, you know the heat is on, isn't it? Yeah. We Okay, let's put it this way. I was in high school, my last year of high school. Uh, Blade and Comet come up to me and, and tell me, yo, yo, we got to put the fire on these guys, man. Damn! Right? Yo, they just did 10 cars. And we just had to just... A How many cars did you do? Cars. Stop it. We went into Gun Hill Road yeah. on the 3rd Avenue L, yeah. which was right elevated to the two line, the last stop. Mm. We painted 11 cars. <laughs> Top to bottom. Top to bottom, Full whole car. cars. This is... They asked me, yo, where can we go and have fun? I said, yo, I know the spot. And we went to that platform, and we just like psh, base one Z twenty eight pole myself, Peabody, uh, Rat, Chick Wasp. We just like 
11 Peppered the whole lot. Whoa. So what was the response to that from them then? Uh, the response to them was like, <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> these hey. guys, these guys just went off on us. Really? Yes. Between me, Blade, and Kama, we cannot compete until that point of doing whole cars. Mm. When they came out and did the whole Christmas thing in the summertime, mm. we couldn't do it. And again, just going back to the source where it all began, like you saw the incremental development oh. of what was what was a particular style on a train to actually what became whole cars and the finessing and the skill set that turned into battling for its time. Right. It was. It, see, the thing is, when it came to battles, that means more colors and more colors and more colors. Which meant more racking, which meant more. Right. Well, me was not a problem because I always had pain. Mm. It was just the point of utilizing the colors that was there. And to go on and compete with somebody else, you got to know your color scheme and... Mm. executed at that time. Mm. And a lot of it in the dark, all daytime as, as it... <coughs> both, yeah. No fear. No fear at all. Honestly, because at that point with, with myself, mm. we only had... Lighting was... Inside the tunnel was no more than 60-watt light bulbs <laughs> that we couldn't even tell... The colour from the... Yeah. Yeah, the color we could tell, but it was, if you're using black and burgundy, meaning brown at that time, you couldn't tell the difference. No, 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 no. No. This is where people get it confused. The real skill is, you know. Any good writer anywhere in the world will know this. It's like loads of shades of black, but you know what you're doing. So you know you can have a pink... That shit just blows my mind. Now, mind you, we didn't have my pink. Mind. We have federal safety purple. Mm. Right, so how dark was that? Purple was uh, more or less like a... Mid to dark. Uh, yeah, mid to dark. dark, like a wine color. Yeah. That's all we had. Yeah, and I, I, f remembering those, you know, pictures and Star Wars, I, I get that. I think I understand the color of that that held presence on the train for its time. There wasn't anything much lighter there, was there? No. Nah. Not for its time. Because nah. it would be runny. It wouldn't it wouldn't, it wouldn't hold colour anyway, would it? The pigmentation was... No, it would hold colour. It's just that we didn't have that colour. just wasn't there. <sighs> like, I will show you my top to bottom that I did in 1977 before walking away from it. And that was when Star Wars, when Star Wars first came into play. Yeah. I, me and Chino went back to do um, a whole car, and we did Dark Vader right in the middle. Of it. Well, this was another character. You know, where I was sitting at the top, you know, Bo Day, you were the first person. Darth Vader, you were the first person. Yes. You know, this, the characters really weren't in play at that time. No, because... Okay, everybody was doing newspaper characters, mm. meaning uh, Mickey Mouse, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beetle Bailey, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Hogar, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So I took it to another step, not to be disrespectful to nobody, mm. but Star Wars was an upcoming movie. Mm. And by 76, they were advertising that this one's coming into play, so we took it. We took advantage of that situation mm. and put it into play. Mm -hmm. Do you? There was a. There's a handful of a good handful of people that weren't in Style Wars of its time, and I know you probably get asked this question a lot. Yeah. You don't want to know the story on that one, and I just don't want to explore that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you can't get, you can't kill a kid. No, I, I, I try, I, I try, kill, people. I don't want to kill Henry with that. One. <laughs> but I think what it is is when you, when it comes down to it, to really uh, summarize on a culture that 
it started from inception in such a time and then it just engulfed everywhere. It's kind of hard to kind of put everyone in the course of an, an hour-long documentary. It's yes, long yes. Honestly, the, the culture has developed so much mm. and that's why I'm still around enjoying the culture. And your style, man. Like, it, it's so now. Like, it still holds up. Justin, relevant. true. It's so relevant, bro. Like, you love this shit. Yes, you can sir. tell, like, you're learning. You, you it just looks like you're just you're putting a puzzle together on the wall still. That 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 was the gap between seventy seven and two thousand mm. that I fear the most, mm. that I enjoy the most. Mm. Meaning, when I got back into it, my family decided to accept being for what I was doing. Mm. Mm. So, how did that feel? I, it feels great. Yeah. How do they feel about it, Justin? How do you feel? About they it? love it. They love it. Yeah. They love it. Justin, what's it like? Uh, sorry, I want to just draw Justin in there for a second. What's it like seeing your dad? Like, I mean, he's an international, he's an international graffiti star, man. Yeah. Like, how's 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 this feel for you? I mean, it's great. Yeah, coming from you know such great like mm-hmm. high standards, you know. Yeah. Does it's it does it does it freak you out like a little bit? You know, sometimes really? it's like you know I have to meet those yeah. criteria. You know, keep yeah. everything clean and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Did you ever see this ca- coming around as you were growing up? Did you ever see I mean, it swing like a a dinosaur's tail? But all of a sudden you're you're on road with him. Yeah, when I was younger, I mean, I, like talking about like three years old, like yeah. toddler, I was I always had a can in my hand. Like, crazy, I, like five points. Yeah, come on, then. darling, come in, come in a bit more, yeah, Justin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just inside the house, yeah. all tight. And what do you write? Uh, I write Joker. All tight, Joker yeah. inside the place, yeah. Yeah, come to you, you're going to have to sit down, you're going to sit down, because there's no microphones, not on, Just, we're not pinned here. You've got to explain to them why you haven't decided to go with the re situation. Yeah. Yeah. You Ex- know, explain my, that. My, my son tells me that um, right now he doesn't want to take on re mm. because uh. he feels he wants to become... His own. Mm-hmm. And when he told me the Joker, I'm a big Batman fan, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I respect it. Mm-hmm. So from there on, if he wants to be the Joker for the rest of his life, that's his choice. Got the blessing from Ree. Yes, Ooh, thank you. Man. Don't get more higher than that, surely. <laughs> big one, yeah. Um, I don't know, I like the name Joker. I yeah. like the way the K, like the K's in the middle, and yeah. I can work with that. Yeah. And I could still work with the R and the E at the end. Mm-hmm. So either way, it still works out. It's too. It's true. Yeah. You can also you can switch the letters as well, JKR or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How much how much uh, intel do you get from your pops? Like you know, yeah. there must be moments where you're just like, this is not fucking working for me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I had one today actually. I was painting and I was like, I don't really like it. Like, it's not what I feel like I could do. I could do better. You know, so. Mm. We spoke about it and we went back to it and worked on it. And yeah, yeah. Now it's to a standard that I feel like, all right, like I could leave it there. How much of it is? Does it? Is it like, oh man, Dad giving me advice? Yeah. It, is that a hard kind of pill sometimes? Or then when you see his piece, you're just like, oh damn, it's re. Yeah, you got You just got to take it with a grain of salt. You know mm, what I'm saying? Mm. Like just accept it and say, all right, well I can, you know. Yeah. You know, I have to listen to this. Like yeah. this is pioneer. You know, like. Yeah. He's, very, he's yeah. very respectful, but Justin is his own man. Yeah. You he can tell. He's calling his dad. He's yeah. his own person. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people would fuck because of who his dad is, a lot of people would follow and go, oh, remember that shadow? Yeah. But he is his own person. So yeah. And I think that's super important. He does him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It's, it's, it's really, it is, yeah, you don't want to fall into any shadows yeah. because your individual style, especially your graph, is, is key. Yeah, it's the one thing you want to hold, like your individual style and, mm. yeah, your details and everything. And and even today, looking at the piece that you were doing, there was definitely, I could see, I don't know if you see it pulse when he's painting, because it's the first time I see, but I can see the struggle within of creating that identity, yeah. as much identity as you can, because it doesn't look like yeah. There was an influence outside of just what you were feeding out, um, feeding from. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Yeah, thank you. Standing, thank you. He's standing on his own two feet. Yeah, he's standing on his own two feet. Yeah. This, this, this joke piece, which looks like a repeat. Yeah. 
Dad, fix this for us. Yeah, yeah. Two do not look the same. They don't look the same. Yeah. But I guess that's the highest praise. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right? Thank you. Yeah, that yeah, is uh, that is a pretty good praise. Yeah. You just got to do more. Yeah, I just have yeah. to consistently, more, more. yeah, keep going. Yeah, that's that's the hardest bit. The yeah. more and more bit because the slowly, you slowly. Twenty. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then before you know it, you're addicted. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how graph is. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been a pleasure, and we could carry on forever. I know you got flights to catch and stuff, but my goodness, what a, what a legacy and still going. What's the future? What's the future, Ree? The future is that uh, my son will be more established on what I want him to be. Mm. For myself. I'm enjoying life. At the age of 62, what else can you be? 62, man. I mean, you know, if you're talking about what does graffiti give you? It gives you life to it does, see the world. It it's, well, let's just put it this way. Art itself, it's very colorful. And to enjoy it and to say that I've been through it, that's what counts. It's all that counts, yeah. Part of a huge tapestry that has led to graffiti and street art being what it is now. And this podcast wouldn't be right without having one of the original first-gen pioneers inside the place. Thank you. Re, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an honour. Yeah, man, thank you. And big shout to Justin. Thank you. Welcome you guys to London. Big up Pulse inside the place. One of my heroes, dude. One of my yeah, heroes. I can't we, even begin to... I can't even, don't get me started on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. He made it happen. Yeah, he man, made, made it happen. happen. And yes. it goes without saying, I'm going to take this camera. If you're listening and not watching, we're going to go and find Billy, who's at the front of the store right now. So I'm going to drop this mic, and we're going to use the audio on the camera here. Should we go and do it? Yeah. Let's get Please. it going. Here we go. Billy, where are ya? Where art thou, Billy? I'm here, my man. What are you saying? I've had something <gasps> in the chiller <laughs> all day since you've arrived because you always bring blessing to the shop. So this one's for you, my man. I want you to pop it. Respect. Here you go, my man. Let's see how we do it here <laughs> in London town. <laughs> hey! Yay, come on, really? bro. Thank come you on, bro. Very come much. on. You always it's come and bring blessing to the shop, bro. You pop that. You popped that baby. Here we go. Look at that. Nice glasses as well. No paper cups here, mate. Hey. Proper. Damn. Proper. The canteries. Woo. <laughs> They're doing it, mate. Oh, this is yeah. how we roll at VIP. We don't get no... There you Jack. go. VIP yeah, all the way through. Get the Jack Daniels, man. <laughs> Let's have this party <laughs> proper. <laughs> hey. Cheers. This has been in the freezer from the moment you came. Nah, it's just not going through. Mm. Yes. That's how we roll that VIP for our guest people. We let them have the moe. Hey? The moe. <laughs> bottle of moe yep. coming through. See? Yeah. No frills. The original baby coming out. <laughs> on. That's it. That's it. Re sign it off, man. Say peace. 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 VIP. Come on.